So he began to use this man, Simon Magus. And in verse 18 and 19 it says that he wanted this power. Simon Magus wanted this power which he received from the Holy Spirit so he could work miracles in the name of God. But he didn't want to change. That's the thing. He wanted to stay a carnal human being without being converted to Jesus Christ. But he wanted the power. He didn't want to change. Remember the old Babylonian mystery religion? Nimrod and Semiramis formed and said you don't have to change. You can be licentious. You can break God's laws. You can do anything you want in the name of religion. In the name of religion. So without repenting at all or changing his life or giving up idolatry in any way, Simon wanted to buy apostleship in the church. And he asked for it. He asked the apostle Peter for this power and through the laying so that when he laid hands on people they could receive God's Holy Spirit. But then, notice Peter's answer in verse 20 to 23. And I'm just going to summarize it because I've got so much to give today. Peter actually said for this man, Simon Magus, to take his money and go to hell with it. That's what the original shows. Go back and check out the Greek. It literally means take your money and go to hell, Simon. You can't buy God's Holy Spirit. You cannot buy the power of God. Nowhere in the Bible is there ever a revealed record where Simon became a member of the church of the living God. Nowhere. He did, however, begin to take the name of Jesus Christ and a few of Christ's teachings. He began to mix them. It's called an amalgamation of religion. And it became known as the Babylonian mystery religion. However, he hung a Christian label on his new organization hung a Christian label on it so we can begin to see how this deception of Satan could go on. So he set about to establish a universal religion where he would be the head of it. Now, I've summarized a few things out of the book of Acts. Now I want to go into history to absolutely prove that what I've said is true. Hastings Dictionary of the Apostolic Church, Volume 1, page 497. It says this about Simon Magus and the new organization he started called a universal church or Catholic church. It says, It need not be supposed that when Simon broke with the Christians, he renounced all he had learned. It is more probable that he carried some of the Christian ideas with him and that he wove them into a system of his own. Thus he became the leader of a retrograde sect. It's a split off, perhaps nominally Christian in names, see, using names, and certainly using some of the Christian terminology, but in reality, anti-Christian. And exalting Simon himself to the central position which Christianity was giving to Jesus Christ. So instead of upholding Jesus Christ, he bewitched the people by his miracles and he became God on earth. He became God's replacement because, you see, he propagated the, uh, the, uh, the thought that the church now is the kingdom of God on earth and that he was the head of the church himself. He was in the place of Christ, so he was God on earth ruling the kingdom of God. Well, let's go on. Page 496 from that book. And I quote, The amalgamation of paganism and Christianity that was especially obvious in the Simonian system is readily explicable in the teaching of Simon Magus, who was brought into intimate contact with Christian teaching before becoming a genuine member. So he became, he came into contact with Christian teachings, he learned it, And then he amalgamated Christian and paganism together. Now, from another book, Apostolic Christianity, volume 2, page 566, we read, The author or first representative of this baptized heathenism. That's all it was. Because they didn't change. God gives His Holy Spirit to those who obey Him. Acts 5.32 
When a person is baptized in water and he does not obey God, he'll not give his Holy Spirit to those people. They're still walking after the flesh, and that's exactly what Simon Magus started. So anyway, it says the author or first representative of this baptized heathenism is Simon Magus, who unquestionably adulterated Christianity with pagan ideas and practices. And then on page 514 of that same book it says, and subsequently attempted with the aid and with the sanction of Christianity to set up a rival universal religion or Catholic, which the word Catholic means universal. So here was the founding of the Roman Catholic Church, but it hadn't become Roman yet. And we're going to see how it became the Roman Catholic Church. So from just this short documentation of history, we can see that Simon Magus was indeed the founder. He's the one who had the exact same attitudes as Satan the devil. He was a deceiver, he was a liar, and he lusted for total power because he wanted everybody to come under subjugation to him and his Babylonian mystery religion with a new label of Christian on it. And he wanted to be the central figure, God on earth, Instead of upholding Jesus Christ and worshiping Him, they looked to a human being as a dictator. As a dictator. That's why it says in Revelation, well, I'll get to that in a minute, but in 2 verse 15, it talks about the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. And when you break down the word Nicolaitan, it means the conqueror of the people or a church dictatorship where one man is the central figure in total dictatorial control over the membership instead of Jesus Christ being their King and Lord. So the writings of the apostles all through the New Testament combated the Simeon paganized Christian religion. It's mentioned many times. And it's mentioned, as I've already said, in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4, where it talks about another Jesus. Well, I hadn't mentioned that verse yet, but it talks about another Jesus or another spirit that is being taught in the world. And that spirit or attitude was one of the Antichrist, which was appropriating to himself the position of God, and it was not worshiping Jesus Christ, but it was worshiping someone else, but making people think you were worshiping Christ and God. So Satan's ministers, under the direct supervision of Simon Magus, were literally transformed, as it says in in 2 Corinthians 11, verse 11 through 14. They were transformed into ministers of righteousness. They appeared to be the true representatives of Jesus Christ. And yet all the while, they were leading the masses of humanity down a primrose path to destruction. So it's always been easier to follow our own human nature rather than to follow and to change the precepts of God. In Jeremiah chapter 17, I've got this memorized, but I'll go ahead and turn there. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. The heart is deceitful, Above all things, this is our natural heart and our mind separate from God's Holy Spirit which can can convert us. He says, and it's desperately wicked and who can know it? This is the heart of men. Each one of us, before God's Holy Spirit opened our mind, was exactly the same way. We could lie to ourselves. We could rationalize anything we wanted to do and make it right instead of wrong. We could make sexual relationship outside of marriage and before marriage right if we wanted to. Our mind could twist it to where we would accept it. That's the human mind. We can lie. We can actually plunder a business that we work for through stealing of pencils, paper, and and any other thing they have that we want and justify it if we want to. And we can do it as a human being. So the mind is desperately wicked. And then in Romans chapter 8 and verse 7, Romans 8, verse 7. It tells just a little more about the human mind. It says, Because the carnal mind, that's the one before God's Holy Spirit, is enmity, it's hostility against God. It is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. The mind separate and apart from God's Holy Spirit cannot obey the law of God. It's hostile to it. Go to the churches who have come out of this Babylonian mystery religion and ask them if they keep the law of God. They're hostile to it. They are. The one I belong to, it made them angry, very angry, when you mentioned the law of God. Oh, that old law was nailed to the cross. That was a harsh law. What's wrong with the law that says you shall not kill? 
What's wrong with that? All it does, if you take the opposite side, it's helping everyone you come into contact with to live a better, more abundant life. And what about the one that says you shall not commit adultery? That means that you're going to be so faithful to your marital partner that there will be nothing to intercede between you and destroy that family. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a protective law. God gave it for our good. The one they hate is the Sabbath day. And they get upset about that. And I know that because I was one who argued against it the strongest. I did. I remember going door to door in campaigns to get people to come to our revivals. And I would stand and argue with them all day if they would stand there. Because I remember running up against a man up on Guyer Avenue in St. Louis who kept the Sabbath day. He was a Seventh-day Adventist. And boy, did I ever argue with that man. But I didn't win. I was the loser. Because, you see, I had to repent of that. (laughs) But that was a part of the mystery Babylon religion. It was all a part of it. Okay, let's go on, though. Simon was very active. Simon became very active. His own Babylonian counterfeit Christianity was nothing more than baptized heathenism. And you can trace it to 33 A.D. Ask any church where they're up to date on their religious affiliation and their history. Ask them when the New Testament church started. The one I belong to said 33 A.D. Simon Magus was the founder of that church, not Jesus Christ, because he started on June 18th, the day of Pentecost, 31 A.D., because he died on the Passover of that year, 31 A.D. The Acts of the Apostles is a true history of the New Testament church. But that Acts ended in 69 A.D., because the destruction of the temple occurred, Jerusalem was destroyed in 70 A.D., And there was no more history recorded in the book of Acts. However, when you pull down a curtain, you can't see what's on the other side, can you? No, you can't. There are quotes from history which document that once the destruction of the temple took place and the church was scattered and the Jews were scattered from Jerusalem, there became known a lost history in history. It's just like somebody pulled a curtain down. Suddenly, you couldn't see anything that was going on after that for a hundred years. And then suddenly, when the curtain was raised, there's a totally different church than the New Testament church that kept God's Sabbath, His holy days, that believed in the law of God. They knew that they were under the covenant of God that was made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It was a new covenant, but the same laws to be written in our hearts and in our minds. It was a totally different church. And you couldn't hardly find anyone who kept the Sabbath anymore except a person here and a person over here. They were scattered. They were just out of sight. So let's go into history now and let's read what a historian says. Jesse Lyman Hurlbut has a fantastic book called The Story of the Christian Church. And I quote, It's a matter of historical record that of all the periods of the church's history, it is one, this is talking about the hundred years right after 69 and 70 A.D., It is one about which we know the least. For 50 years after St. Paul's life, a curtain hangs over the church through which we strive vainly to look. And when at last it rises, about 120 A.D., with the writings of the earliest church fathers, we find a church in many aspects very different from the days of St. Peter and St. Paul. Something happened. Simon... Magus and his mystery Babylon religion with the churchianity or Christian sounding names was at work. And you can also read Edward Gibbon's book, Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire. And he says, scanty materials of ecclesiastical history seldom enable us to dispel the cloud that hangs over the first age of the church. We just can't know what Simon Magus and his disciples did, but history is blotted out. And you know something? History is being blotted out today in the world. The rise of socialism is nothing more than a satanic power. And every country where socialism rises, they totally change the textbook so that you don't know what your previous history and your heritage, your heritage really was. And that's exactly what happened. Simon Magus, under the inspiration of Simon, wanted to make sure that New Testament Christians on down the line would not know their true heritage. 
so that he could so deceive humanity. So these shadows, these curtains fell 